using Cleco to hold this panel on, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribe a line right here, and I'll cut both through this panel and this panel, and then butt weld them together. And then that way I, I know that this is not going to move where the wheel well is. And I've already made my template right here. It goes up in here like this. And I check that. Fits real nice, matches the other side. And then this right here will be cut off. And and then this will be formed around on the bottom, you know, the correct way that the stock Plymouth Furies go. And then what I did is anytime you're doing a quarter panel or a bottom quarter, you want to measure from a body line to a body line. And I got all my measurements right here. So it's 11 and an eighth and then six and from this you see a little faded body line right here. From there down to here, six and three sixteenths, ten and seven sixteenths, five and seven eighths, blah blah blah, whatever. And then, uh, then after you get these cut, this will drop down, and then you can stick this quarter right back up in there, and you and use clamps to clamp it up, and you could butt weld this thing with butt weld clamps all the way down through here, and make it a lot better. And I already checked this with a laser. I had the laser set up behind me right here. And what this does is this has a, let me see if I'll turn it on. You can see it has a line and, and uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's very faint in my camera right now, but see the red line on the, on the line right here? That runs all the way through this body line. And then I, I put the laser on here where it was and you can see the laser right there. It starts here, but back here it comes up almost three quarters of an inch where this panel is sitting like this, and that's stock on these uh, Plymouth Furies. But I'll keep getting this thing put together, and then uh, when I start forming some more crap, I'll, I'll try to film some more. Um, I've got a lot of hammering and dollying to do, but what I ended up doing is I took these bottom quarters that are aftermarket and just flattened them out and started over because it was a joke. These were so off and so far gone. Like, they're not even close when they come to you, you know, when they get shipped to you to your shop. They're not even close. Um, you can see the difference right here. Um, I have the, this is the huge, you know, uh, lip that comes up or this tip that sticks up like this. And you can see the difference that it's not that bad on this panel. So what I did is I flattened these all the way out or almost all the way out and then just re-ran them so that they, they're nice and smooth, hammered and dollied them, got them where I liked them. And then uh, this bottom panel, you can see the line where I flattened that out. I put that in the uh, plenishing hammer and flatten it completely out. And then I walked this edge right here too with the hammer and dolly and got it where I wanted it. And it's fitting a lot better. But uh, I'll film some more in a bit. Messy workbench. This uh, dolly stand that I made a couple days ago is working awesome. I put all my post dollies down here and put some expanded metal on here so you can sit the post dollies on there. And then uh, what I did today is I have a cannonball that's cut in half and I made this post dolly. It's just an old pipe flange. Welded a piece of metal on it so you can drop it down into the vise, hold on to it. And then uh, drill a hole in a piece of sheet metal. Hammer this down with a dead bow hammer. Make a dimple die. Worked great. Because I had a real you know, I got smaller dimple dies, but I had a little bit bigger one. So that's how I made this right here. But I made this floor section and got that all bent. But this is what this is what it looked like in the trunk right here. This was all rotted out and nasty and it's all, I mean, you can see how much is gone. It's kind of dark in here. <clears throat> but this side was completely rotted out. You can see through it. So I cut all that out and then I got this piece of set so that I get that put in there and I got all the lines rolled in it with the bead roller and the blue the blue stuff on it is just that die come die machinist die I use that for making sure the lines are dead on scribed on there and then when you use the the silver sharpies on this uh blue die it, it really stands out so you can see that way you can make sure the lines get centered or whatever and then rolled the beads in there with the bead roller. And then, like I said, I made the dimple die and that's how I did that dimple in that deal. So it worked out great. But anyways, hope you guys are having a good night. Thanks for watching. So here's that piece all finished. And then uh, just metal prepped it, hammered and dollied it. Got it looking nice. 
and then it's ready to weld into the trunk now. So and that'll make it easy. <clears throat> Sorry about that. That'll make it easy because it'll be nice and clean and prepped and no problems welding it. Thanks for watching.